Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the e-bike MSVA. It is getting so close to being ready for the test, but there were just a few more things that I thought of, little touch-ups here and there, um, to do the bike just to get it absolutely ready. Um, things just like putting some edging tape on the rear light just to merge it into the little black cover I did, um, doing some little touch-up works here and there. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I've also got this carbon fibre effect front mud guard which kind of folds in on itself and then uh, zip ties to the side. Um, so let's just have a look at how that fits on the bike. Alright, so I'm just thinking about the um, placement of this mud guard. It's really meant to go around the, um, the other way actually, so you have this kind of flap sticking down. But then it's either going to block the charge port here um, or it's going to restrict um, motion of the wheel in this kind of gap here. So yeah, if it's like that, it's then got to kind of bend up towards the end. Whereas if I put it this way, then yeah, looks better, I think. And either way, it protects the wires up here. Um, and this way, you just get more clearance on that charge port down there. And then I can just say I have a mud guard on the front. Just been out on the bike and need to bring it in for a little charge and I noticed down on the back caliper I made a mistake in that there is oil everywhere so I think what's happened is I haven't tightened up this bleed screw properly and uh, it's been leaking out here, um, dripping onto here and I think it must have got onto the rotor somehow um, because the back brake just didn't really do anything. It was firm but it just didn't really slow down. So when I do the um, new brakes, um, I'll at least need to clean the rotor, if not get a new rotor. Um, new pads, bad on my part. In the end, I decided just to get a new brake system as the old one was a little bit spongy and I could just start from square one, get it how I wanted it. For the new brakes, I essentially have another Suron um, rear brake set. Um, ideally, I just wanted the lever, um, but I found one for £55, which came with the caliper and everything. And if I can get this caliper to fit on the bike, it has four pistons um, rather than two, and it's a complete loop, so I haven't got to bleed it, so I thought it was worth giving it a try. Look at that. <laughs> Green pistons on the caliper. As I say, if it works, that will look wicked. Let the time lapse begin. Wow. So I've got all the bolts off, chain off, but because of my sheer genius, I now have to take this off um, as well to uh, access the cable down here where it terminates. All of this just to get the brake rotor off to clean it. I'm such an idiot. So yeah, you can see there's quite a bit of green oil down there, a bit of dust that could do with cleaning off as well, all down here, so we'll get that done. Um, that side's fine because the brakes aren't there. Um, a little bit on the wheel, you might just be able to see kind of here. Um, and then yeah, you can see specks of green, probably not on camera. So yeah, I'll just get to work cleaning this up. Right, there we go, just a few more spaces added. That is stupidly close if it does fit. So, this is resting on here, which is stopping this going any lower. And because of, I've explained this before, but when I was trying to fit the wheel into the frame, um, I didn't realise the wheel was too wide, so I had to widen the frame a bit, but it did it on one side more than the other. So I now have to angle the wheel slightly, which means that I can't get any bigger disc rotor on here. Change of plan, it's only fair if I at least give it a try. So I've got a 180mm disc rotor, which is one size up from the 160 that's on there at the moment. 
So with a mixture of washers and luck, let's see if we can get it on. I've at least tested it using this cardboard cutout, um, but it's either behind the disc or in front of the disc, so it's never quite in line where it's actually going to be. But it gives me hope it's not too far off. And that does look quite a bit bigger. You can see it nearly fills kind of the, uh, the casing. So let's get that on and test it. These are some little custom washers I've made. I've just cut a section out of them so that the phase wires can pass through. And I'm going to try and wedge these down the side here to give enough space for the rotor. I know I can get one on without a problem. What a save. So after a bit of a fight, we have those two washers in there. What I realised though was that the arm of the stand was actually pushing into the brake rotor and it did unfortunately bend it a bit. But I just had to bend it back, straighten it out. It's okay with a bit of tools, but just bear that in mind when you're jacking up in the stand to keep the stand away from the rotor. Uh, and as you can see, there's a decent gap now with the rotor. So I've just got to get it all lined up so that it's uh, equal gap both sides. And then we can try adjusting the caliper. Right, this is generally hand on heart the first time I've tried this. So let's get the bolts on before we slide it. Okay, we're going to need a bit more spacers. Oh yeah. You can actually just about see, if I push it all the way forward, the tip of the brake rotor actually pushing through the top of the pad, which means that we can actually back it off a bit and still have room. So yeah, it's worked. And the wheel, if it wasn't gripped by the caliper, would spin freely. Um, there is enough clearance down there, you can see, between the frame and the rotor. So yeah, I think this is the way forward. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. What I may have to do is get a special 180mm um, bracket for the caliper rather than the 160 because you can see how many washers I've had to add here. Um, only problem with that is it might push it further back, um, but at least I know it can be done using this one, just like that. So I've got two more um, brake brackets. These are 180mm um, specific brackets. One's designed for the front, one's designed for the back because uh, they're slightly different shapes and I didn't know which one's going to work best so I'm just going to get on and give these a try and you also got a slightly different angle down here so let's get on with that I'm going to try the one that's designed uh, for the rear 180 uh, it can also be used as a front 203 apparently but um, let's give this a try and there we go, it's really hard to see but the top of the rotor, like these kind of ridges bits, line up with the top of those pads, and that just only need to move back a little bit. So I say it's time to get this caliper centered, and then it should be good. With the rear brake now working as well as I could get it, I got to work tidying up the front cables for the last time now that everything was in place. This meant zip tying everything in place and then ticking it off from my job list. Next, I started cleaning the excess thermal paste off the hub motor from installing the hub sinks, which I should have done this earlier as it was harder once it had dried a bit, but hey, you live and learn. So it's not perfect, uh, but it's a lot better than it was. Uh, I'm just trying to get the worst off to make it look better and I think that'll be absolutely fine. Finally, I just did some general cleaning, getting some dirt off that had built up whilst I've been riding it, and finally, it was ready to take on the MSVA. And on that note, I'm going to end the video here. Um, I plan to do another video on actually applying for the MSVA, then obviously a video of the actual MSVA, a follow-up of the MSVA, kind of discussing what happened, um, and who knows what else, but yeah, got lots in the pipeline. But yeah, just bear with me, I'm pretty busy at the moment, you know, it's been a bit of a delay getting this video out, but yeah. Stick around and I'll see you in the next video.